Hello students, today we are going to continue with that topic and today we will be studying something more about combustion, something more about how the flames uh, differ, okay, from substance to substance, okay, how different type of combustions can be there, how different type of substances are there, moreover how we can have control on fire, okay. So, let us start with first of all we will start with the types of uh, combustion that means may be complete and incomplete combustion ok. So, now we are studying about the complete combustion and incomplete combustion. So, let us write the topic now. Complete combustion. Okay, complete combustion and incomplete combustion. See first of all to begin with to revise with just combustion means what now I hope everybody is clear all of you are clear with the term what combustion. When a substance burns to produce heat and light that is known as combustion. Okay. When a substance reacts with oxygen to produce heat and light even that is combustion. It is not always that uh, when a substance undergoes combustion it produces only heat and light. It may produce sound also ok. So, but one thing is very clear that whenever a substance undergoes combustion heat and light is produced ok. Now, Along with heat and light what else is produced? Along with heat and light see when substance is burning ok, when some substance is burning obviously some gas will also be evolved that also we studied yesterday that when a substance burns ok. I took, I took the example of carbon, when carbon is burning it reacts with oxygen that means carbon dioxide gas was released and when magnesium reacts with oxygen or when magnesium burns then what happens magnesium oxide will be formed. Similarly, when whatever substance is burning ok say when sulphur burns sulphur dioxide will be formed nitrogen burns that means the oxides will be formed ok. Now, along with that how the combustion can vary how the you know the byproducts, the products which are being formed due to the combustion how it varies and why does it vary ok. So, let us talk about now complete combustion and incomplete combustion. Now, first of all the complete combustion children we all know that for burning a substance ok, for a substance to undergo the process of combustion what is required oxygen gas is required ok. When I say that oxygen gas is required, so what should be the quantity of oxygen ok and what happens if the quantity of oxygen is not sufficient for the burning ok. So, children when the availability of oxygen is quite good, when oxygen is present in good amount ample amount or when sufficient amount of oxygen is present and a substance undergoes the combustion ok. When a substance is burning in presence of sufficient oxygen then we say that it is a complete combustion ok. Again when a substance burns in the sufficient amount of air, when a substance burns in a sufficient amount of oxygen then it is known as complete combustion ok. Similarly, when a substance burns in insufficient amount of oxygen that means when the amount of air or the amount of oxygen is not sufficient for the process of combustion to take place then in the, that case the combustion is known as incomplete combustion ok. So, let us talk about the definition now complete combustion when a substance is burning in sufficient amount of oxygen or when a substance undergoes combustion in sufficient amount of air then it is known as 
what complete combustion. So, let us write the definition when a substance burns in sufficient amount of air or what else can we write over here? We can write oxygen when a substance burns in sufficient amount of air or oxygen it is called as complete combustion. Okay. So, when a substance burns in a proper air in proper amount like proper amount of oxygen is there proper amount of air is there. So, the combustion is known as complete combustion. Now, if I talk about incomplete combustion, incomplete combustion So, what shall I write here? When a substance burns in insufficient amount of air or oxygen, then it is called as incomplete combustion. Okay. So, let us write over here when a substance burns in insufficient amount of oxygen or what can we write air ok. Then it is called as incomplete combustion. Okay. Then it is known as incomplete combustion. Now children, when we are talking about complete combustion and incomplete combustion, so, now we will also talk about the byproducts which are formed, we will also talk about the substances which are formed. Okay. So, when a substance undergoes a complete combustion, what are the substances which is formed? So, here along with this what will be formed? Carbon dioxide, okay. what will be formed? The biggest difference I am talking about when a substance undergoes complete combustion carbon dioxide is formed okay. along with that heat light okay. this will be formed even water will be formed okay. water vapor I mean to say. So, carbon dioxide will be formed heat will be formed light will be there and even water vapor will be there okay. even water vapor will be formed. So, when a substance undergoes complete combustion carbon dioxide will be formed, heat will be formed, light will be formed and water vapor will be formed. Now, what should be the case here in incomplete combustion? So, here carbon monoxide will be formed. This is the biggest difference what will be formed here? Carbon monoxide will be formed and here carbon dioxide is formed. Okay. So, carbon monoxide will be formed obviously here also water vapor will be formed. 
okay heat will be formed light will be formed okay along with this even the soot can be formed okay some particles are uh, you know the particles which are not burned why not burn children because in complete combustion everything will be burned okay and even there will be the difference in the flame when a substance undergoes a complete combustion it will give a non luminous flame okay it will give a which kind of flame it will always give non luminous flame okay it will give non luminous lu i'm so sorry it will give non luminous flame and here which kind of flame will be there luminous flame will be there okay now i'll explain you this before explaining i mean even i want to write one more point over here like when a substance undergoes complete combustion blue flame is formed okay blue flame is formed and here in incomplete combustion we have orangish or yellow flame okay orange yellowish flame see now we we'll just have a look on this first of all we are talking about the combustion okay combustion we all are aware now that when any substance burns okay then it is known as combustion the process of burning okay in presence of air that is known as what combustion see if i say in presence of air it doesn't makes any sense because in absence of air nothing can burn the process of combustion cannot even takes place when there is no air okay insufficient air is okay but i cannot say that a combustion process is taking place in complete absence of air because it cannot even takes place as for burning oxygen gas is very very important now so complete combustion when a substance burns in sufficient amount of air or oxygen then it is called as complete combustion now here when it burns with in sufficient amount of oxygen or air then it is called as incomplete combustion now when i talk about incomplete combustion what are the things which comes out what are the by products so carbon dioxide will be formed heat light and water vapor will be formed here carbon monoxide will be formed water vapor will be formed heat light will be formed and along with that some unburned hydrocarbons will be left which can be seen okay it will be what it can be known as soot now the flame is what blue colored why because there is nothing which is unburned and so yellowish flame doesn't occur here as the substances are left okay so they glow and the flame is of what orange yellow color because they are glowing and this this kind of flame is known as luminous flame okay and that is the reason children it is always suggested that a person should not sleep in a room which is closed and along with that it is some like burning material is kept like to talk about burning material means what it can be maybe a bonfire sort of thing or maybe a candle or you know like many some a uh, lamp sort of a thing which is producing or which can produce large amount of gas why because what will happen if the room is closed if there is no passage of you no know, crossing of air so what will happen the oxygen the amount of oxygen which is present in the room will be utilized for that combustion okay and as soon as as soon as the oxygen get reduced then what will happen the gases which which gases carbon dioxide carbon monoxide these gases will replace oxygen okay and in such kind of conditions even a person can feel suffocated and may even 
die in extreme conditions I am talking about but you know that is the reason it is always suggested that if certain things are there like bonfire and something is there. So, it should not be a closed room it should be a like open ventilator sort of thing ok and even if uh, candles are there something. So, what has to be done like the passage should be there so that the oxygen can again enter. So, this was about the combustion which kind of combustion complete combustion and incomplete combustion and you know even this can be known as what, what the thing which I am saying that when the level of carbon monoxide increases it give rise to a uh, it can give rise to the death of a person or it you know uh, that is an extreme case, but in normal it can give a suffocation you can the person feels suffocated and this is known as carbon monoxide poisoning it is known as carbon monoxide poisoning. So, what is the meaning of carbon monoxide poisoning? It means when a substance undergoes incomplete combustion. So, the gas which is produced is carbon monoxide. Now, what does carbon monoxide does actually why like you know it is a very poisonous gas carbon monoxide is more poisonous uh, like you know if we talk in comparison. So, this one is very poisonous why it is so poisonous what does it do. So, it actually combines with the hem group ok it combines and what is from like what happens actually when carbon monoxide combines with the hem group of the blood. So, it does not allow the like the uh, oxygen carrying capacity of the blood get get reduced ok. When oxygen carrying capacity of the blood get reduced. So, obviously, it is a like you know it is a disastrous condition for a person or it is a very uh, dangerous condition for that person because the body fails to get proper amount of oxygen why because see in normal case oxygen is carried by blood ok in the form of what oxyhemoglobin is formed and oxygen is carried. Now, when carbon monoxide is there carbooxyhemoglobin is formed which is not able to carry the oxygen that means now oxygen would not be combining. So, now what happens the, the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood get reduced and that is the reason why the person feel more suffocated more suffocated because inside the body also there is now what the lack of oxygen. We will discuss this carbon monoxide poisoning and how carbon monoxide combines with blood and how does it affects our body later on in the chapter. So, this was all about the combustion which kind of combustion now we are talking about complete combustion and incomplete combustion ok. Now, we will move to the next topic. Now, we will move to the next topic. Now, children before discussing anything else we will just have a discussion about the you know like we are talking about combustion, but first of all we should even also know about how the matchstick came into the existence how did it develop ok how we developed matchsticks. So, actually even 5000 years before ok even 5000 years before uh, not exactly I can say that matchstick uh, matchsticks were used, but still the something like matchsticks were used. What was that? See before 5000 years uh, in Egypt I, uh, like what they used to do they used to take small pieces of pine wood ok. They used to take small pieces of pine wood and they used to dip that into sulphur ok. What I am talking about children I am talking about matchstick.
ok. So, so I am talking about in Egypt it was used before 5000 before 5000 years ok, but not in the form of the matchstick, but now uh, in, uh, in the sense uh, matchsticks not in the form which we are using today. So, how they used to uh, have which kind of matchsticks or what they used to have children, so they used to use pine wood ok, pieces of pine wood ok, which they used to dip into sulphur ok which they used to dip in sulphur. So, when the sulphur thing used to come over there, so we all know sulphur is what? It will catch fire as soon as little amount of friction is there. So, this was the kind of the matchstick. Now, before I can say 200 years ago, okay, before uh, just before Two hundred years ago, the matchstick were like uh, the people started using making matchsticks. Okay, uh, like again, some adva advancement was there. Now, what was used, children? Now, in making of matchstick, okay, antimony was used. Antimony. Okay, what was used, children? Antimony was used. Then triacylphide was used and now along with the triacylphide ok. Now, potassium chloride was also used, potassium chloride was used and white phosphorus was used. ok. What was used? Antimony, triacylphide means form of again sulphur, potassium chloride and white phosphorus ok and white phosphorus was used. Now, the solution of this was to be like they used to make the solution of this and along with this little amount of glue they used to add. So, due to glue this mixture used to come at the tip of the stick ok. Now, due to friction when they used to rub it across some rough surface it used to start burning ok. So, what used to happen actually potassium chloride and white phosphorus it used to react ok and it the ignition that temperature uh, used to occur which is required for white phosphorus to burn and that is the reason the stick used to burn. Now, somehow it was realized that this white phosphorus children ok, this white phosphorus is very very harmful, harmful in which sense it was really very very harmful for the workers who were making the matchsticks ok. So, this white phosphorus were was responsible for the ill health of the workers the side effects of the white phosphorus was visible in the workers who was responsible for making the mistakes. Now, then what happened you know, now what kind of mistakes are being made like one thing is replaced. Now, what is the case children? Antimony is used, trisulfide is used, potassium chloride is there, but instead of using white phosphorus, red phosphorus is used ok. Now, when mixture of this along with little glue is made and is you know uh, it is added to the, uh, the uh, starting or at one end of the small stick. Now, when such kind of stick is allowed to rub with the rough surface ok. Now, which kind of rough surface children? Now, which
white kind of rough surface the rough surface used to have powdered ok powdered glass ok the rough surface used to have what children the rough surface used to have so this rough surface used to have powdered glass now what we what are the things which is used children it is all same like antimony is there ok antimony is there then triosulfide is there ok then potassium ok as I have written over there also potassium chloride ok it is there but now red phosphorus replaced what red phosphorus is the one which replaced white phosphorus see I am not at all saying that red phosphorus is very very safe or it does not harm the body or it does not harm the worker even it harms even it is harmful but the effects can be I can say the effects of red phosphorus is quite low as comparison to the effects of the white phosphorus ok now when such kind of along with this what was there children glue was there ok here also glue was there any kind of adhesive whatever they are using now when such kind of mixture is there at the tip of the stick and it is rubbed to the rough surface how the surface is made rough it has powdered glass in it now to this when the stick is rubbed due to friction ok what happens it get rubbed nicely now red phosphorus reacts with the reaction takes place and it gets converted here into white phosphorus ok now it gets converted into white phosphorus urine because of what because of because of rubbing ok because of rubbing it the red phosphorus reacts with chlorate potassium chlorate and it gets converted the red phosphorus gets converted into white phosphorus and as we all know white phosphorus is what is it catches fire it reaches to its ignition temperature ok what is the meaning of ignition temperature ignition temperature is that minimum temperature that least temperature that uh, that temperature at least which is required for a what substance to catch fire which is required for a substance to burn is required for a substance to undergo combustion ok so here again it reaches to the level where which level it reaches it reaches to the ignition temperature and thus it catches fire and thus we see the mystic burning ok so what is the thing children mystic mystic was used in different ways ok so as I have written over there in Egypt before 5000 years also mystic was used but not in the form as it is used the pieces of pines were used it were dipped in the sulfur ok as we all know sulfur catches fire so it, it reaches to the ignition temperature and it catches fire later on before now 200 years ago antimony trisulfide potassium chlorate along with white phosphorus and little amount of glue this mixture was used uh, at the tip of the stick to make what meth stick now it was seen that the white phosphorus is fatal and not safe for the workers so again a little change in this that white phosphorus was replaced by red phosphorus and then it when this kind of stick was rubbed against a rough surface the red phosphorus get converted ok the reaction takes place and it gets converted into white phosphorus and thus heat and light can be produced ok so this was about how the meth stick came into existence now let us talk about some other topic so we will have look upon something else 
now see i'm talking about here how we can burn okay how the combustion takes place how many types of combustion are there we read okay like spontaneous rapid explosion we read about inflammable substances inflammable okay and the substances also like you know so like one thing can be divided or can be studied in the different ways okay so now the fluid the substance which burns okay is known as what fuel the substance which burns is known as fuel but we burn many things okay we see many thing burning and even we burn many things even we burn grass also if the grass or the you know garbage is also burn so do we call it as a fuel no we never call this substance as a fuel then what is the meaning of fuel children see first of all the fuel can be divided into three stages and uh, let's talk more about that just within the few minutes